Golden Peaks, a renowned and prestigious company, stood as a beacon of success and innovation in the business world. Established with a vision of reaching new heights, the company had carved its niche across diverse industries, becoming a symbol of excellence and prosperity. Golden Peaks held its core values in high regard, including a strong emphasis on innovation, integrity, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Under the visionary leadership of its founder and owner, Mr. Howard, the company aimed to be a pioneer in all its endeavours, continuously raising the bar and challenging conventional limits. A prestigious company known for its innovation and success was located in the heart of the city. The office walls were adorned with awards and the atmosphere buzzed with the energy of ambitious professionals striving for excellence. However, within the facade of success, there lurked an ominous figure, Richard, the manager. When Richard first joined the company as a fresh-faced newcomer, he exuded an air of enthusiasm and eagerness. His initial interactions with colleagues were marked by a seemingly genuine passion for the company's mission and a desire to learn from the experienced professionals around him. Richard appeared to be an innocent and promising employee, embodying the qualities Mr Howard valued in the workforce. In the early days, Richard was diligent, always the first to arrive and the last to leave. He sought guidance from senior employees, showing a thirst for knowledge and a willingness to contribute to the success of the company. His early work reflected a genuine commitment to excellence and his colleagues admired his apparent dedication. As time passed, Richard skillfully cultivated a facade of humility and dedication. He strategically aligned himself with influential figures within the organisation, earning the trust of key individuals who could vouch for his work ethic and loyalty. His transformation from an eager fresher to a cunning manipulator was gradual but deliberate. During team projects, Richard presented himself as a team player, willingly collaborating with others and acknowledging the contributions of his colleagues. He gained a reputation for being affable and approachable, fostering a positive image that would later serve as a shield for his darker intentions. When promotions and opportunities for advancement arose, Richard navigated office politics with finesse. He consistently portrayed himself as a selfless individual, claiming that his primary motivation was to contribute to the success of the company. His carefully crafted persona began to overshadow the truth of his oppressive leadership style and manipulative tactics. As the years passed, Richard's influence steadily grew and he strategically positioned himself as indispensable to the company's operations. His relationship with Mr Howard deepened, fuelled by Richard's expertly crafted image of unwavering loyalty and dedication. The once innocent fresher had metamorphosed into Mr Howard's favourite employee, a confidant whom he trusted implicitly. Richard, during his meetings with Mr Howard, would say, I'm just here to contribute to the success of the company, Mr Howard. Your vision is truly inspiring. Or, I've learnt so much from you and I'm committed to ensuring the company thrives under your leadership. In this way, Richard's ascent from a humble fresher to the favoured manager was a testament to his deceptive prowess. The stark contrast between his public image and his true nature allowed him to manipulate perceptions and secure a position of power within the company, all while maintaining the trust and admiration of Mr Howard. Richard was a man of average height, with greying hair and a permanent scowl etched on his face. His sharp, calculating eye seemed to size up everyone around him, and his tailored suits only accentuated his air of superiority. He ruled his domain with an iron fist, often making decisions without consulting his team and showing a little regard for the well-being of his employees. His office, located at the corner of the top floor, symbolised his isolation from the rest of the workforce. The door, adorned with a gold nameplate, bore the title Manager in bold letters. Inside, the room was immaculate, with minimalistic decor that reflected Richard's cold and efficient nature. Richard's interactions with his subordinates now were marked by condescension and arrogance. 
He rarely acknowledged the efforts of his team, attributing the company's success solely to his brilliance. During meetings, he would dismiss ideas with a wave of his hand, declaring, I know what's best for this company, and your opinions are irrelevant. One day during a team meeting, Julia, a dedicated employee, gathered the courage to voice her concerns about the work environment. Richard's response was laced with disdain as he retorted, Julia, I don't pay you to question my decisions. Just do your job and leave the thinking to those who know better. Despite the toxic atmosphere he created, Richard's hold on the company seemed unshakable. His manipulative tactics and cunning manoeuvres allowed him to maintain control, leaving the employees to endure the oppressive reign of their arrogant manager. The once vibrant and collaborative workplace now bore the heavy weight of Richard's oppressive leadership, casting a shadow over the company's once prominent reputation. Richard's interactions with his employees were characterised by a toxic combination of authoritarianism and manipulation. He possessed a talent for exploiting the vulnerabilities of his team members, effectively keeping them submissive under his rule. Employing fear as his preferred weapon, he fostered an environment of apprehension and uncertainty among the workforce. In private conversations, Richard would employ veiled threats to remind his team of their dependence on him. You know, in this competitive market, jobs are hard to come by. He would sneer. Consider yourselves fortunate to be here. I suggest you all fall in line if you want to keep your positions. To solidify his control, Richard meticulously selected a handful of employees whom he could manipulate through bribery. These individuals became his informants, eyes and ears within the company, providing him with valuable insights into the dynamics of the workplace. In hushed conversations, he would whisper promises of promotions, pay raises and job security, ensuring their loyalty to him. During a highly charged staff meeting, where tension hung thick in the air and discontent among employees was palpable, Richard, wearing a self-satisfied smirk, took the floor to address the room. You see, the successful ones in this company are those who know how to play the game. Some of you could learn a thing or two from them, he declared, making eye contact with his chosen allies. In the shadows, Richard would approach these compromised employees, ensuring they remained under his thumb. You're a smart one, aren't you? Keep proving your loyalty and your future here will be secure, he would insinuate, sealing their allegiance with promises of favouritism. When faced with any potential threat to his position, Richard would deploy his pawn strategically. I have my ways of handling situations, he would say with a sinister smile. It's amazing what a little information can do, don't you think? Some people should be careful about the secrets they keep. By weaving a complex web of manipulation and engaging in unethical practices such as bribery, Richard firmly held onto his power, establishing an oppressive stronghold over the company. He skillfully silenced any form of dissent, swiftly neutralising opposition and ensuring his authority remained unchallenged. The once vibrant workplace had become a breeding ground for paranoia, with employees constantly watching their backs uncertain of who they could trust. In the presence of high authorities, especially the owner of the company, Mr Howard, Richard was a master of disguise. He would morph into a charismatic and congenial leader, hiding his true nature behind a facade of charm and eloquence. During board meetings, Richard would adopt a posture of deference and respect, his tone dripping with false humility. Mr Howard, your vision for this company is truly inspiring, he would say with a practised smile. I am honoured to be a part of such a successful enterprise under your leadership. In private conversations with Mr Howard, Richard's demeanour would be polished and polished. I share your commitment to excellence, he would express, ensuring his words resonated with the owner's values. Rest assured, I am doing everything in my power to ensure the continued prosperity of the company. Whenever challenges arose or failures occurred within the company, Richard expertly shifted blame away from himself. I understand the importance of accountability, he would assure Mr Howard. Rest assured I have already taken steps to address the situation and you will see positive results soon. 
During one-on-one -on -one discussions, Richard would feign concern for the well-being of the company and its employees. I am dedicated to fostering a positive work environment, he would claim, his eyes betraying none of the disdain he harboured for the very individuals he was responsible for leading. When Mr Howard raised questions about the morale of the workforce or the team dynamics, Richard would deflect expertly. I'm actively working on building a strong, cohesive team, he would explain, subtly shifting the blame to external factors. These things take time, but I assure you, positive changes are on the horizon. In moments of praise from Mr Howard, Richard would graciously accept the compliments. Oh, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to lead such a talented team, he would respond, giving the impression of a capable and dedicated leader. The stark contrast between Richard's public persona with Mr Howard and his true nature within the company created a web of deception. While the owner believed he had a competent and loyal manager, the reality was a workplace poisoned by Richard's oppressive leadership and manipulation. The facade carefully crafted in the presence of higher authorities shielded Richard from the consequences of his tyrannical rule. On the other hand, Mr Howard, the visionary owner of Golden Peaks, was a figurehead of leadership, embodying a unique blend of wisdom, integrity and a forward-thinking approach. His presence commanded respect and his actions reflected a genuine commitment to the success of the company and the well-being of its employees. Mr Howard was known for his inclusive leadership style. He believed in fostering a collaborative environment where innovation and creativity could flourish. His door was always open, and he encouraged employees at all levels to share their ideas and concerns. Unlike the oppressive nature of Richard, Mr Howard cultivated a positive and nurturing relationship with his employees. He valued their contributions and recognised that the success of the company was a collective effort. Employees felt a sense of loyalty and admiration for him. Mr Howard was known for fostering a culture of open communication within the company. He believed that every employee played a crucial role in Golden Peaks' success and he made an effort to connect with individuals at all levels. One day during a casual chat in the company cafeteria, Mr Howard approached Sarah, a junior marketing executive. Sarah, I've been hearing great things about your work. Your innovative ideas are what keep us ahead in the market. Keep it up and remember, my door is always open if you need anything. In meetings, Mr Howard would often acknowledge the collective effort of the team. I'm just the captain of the ship. It's each one of you who makes the journey worthwhile. Your dedication to our shared vision is what sets Golden Peaks apart. As the company expanded, Mr Howard took a personal interest in the career development of his employees. When he noticed John, a talented software developer, he spoke with genuine concern. Oh, John, I see potential in you. Let's discuss your career goals and how Golden Peaks can help you achieve them. Your success is our success. During a challenging period for the company, Mr Howard addressed the entire staff with transparency and empathy. Team, we're facing some hurdles, but I believe in our collective strength. We've overcome challenges before and together we'll emerge stronger. Your dedication and resilience are what make Golden Peaks an unstoppable force. Mr Howard made it a point to recognise outstanding contributions. When he came across an impressive project led by Maria, a project manager. He commended her publicly. Maria, your leadership on this project has been exceptional. Your commitment to quality and efficiency reflects the values we hold dear at Golden Peaks. In an annual town hall meeting, Mr Howard shared his gratitude. I want to express my heartfelt thanks to each and one of you. Golden Peaks wouldn't be where it is without your hard work and dedication. Together we've turned dreams into reality. Mr Howard's approachability set him apart. He would often walk around the office engaging in casual conversations with employees from various departments. This accessibility created a culture where employees felt comfortable expressing their thoughts and concerns. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Innovation is the key to our success. If you have an idea, Bring it forward. We're here to support and invest in groundbreaking initiatives. 
Mr. Howard often spoke about the long-term vision for Golden Peaks. He emphasised sustainability, ethical business practices, and the positive impact the company could have on both the industry and the world. In stark contrast to Richard, Mr. Howard's leadership created a workplace where employees felt empowered, valued and inspired. His genuine interest in their well-being and dedication to a shared vision cultivated a positive and thriving corporate culture at Golden Peaks. One fateful day, Serena, a diligent employee at Golden Peaks, found herself caught in the storm of a personal crisis. Her young son had fallen gravely ill, and she was faced with the impossible choice of balancing work responsibilities with the urgent need to care for her ailing child. With a heavy heart and tear-streaked face, Serena mustered the courage to approach Richard, her manager, to request a leave of absence. She knocked on his office door, anxiety gnawing at her. As Richard looked up from his desk, Serena hesitated for a moment before speaking. Mr. Richard, she began, her voice shaky but determined. I'm facing an emergency. My son is very sick and I need to take some time off to be with him. I promise to make up for the lost work and ensure a smooth transition during my absence. Richard, initially engrossed in his paperwork, glanced up at Serena with an indifferent expression. His response was cold and calculated, revealing the true extent of his callous nature. Serena, he retorted dismissively, we all have personal issues to deal with. The company's success depends on the dedication of its employees. I can't have people taking time off whenever they please. Your responsibilities here should be your priority. Serena, desperation and frustration welling up within her, attempted to plead her case further. Oh, Mr. Richard, I understand the importance of work, but my son's health is at stake. I just need a short leave to ensure he gets the care he needs. I, I've never asked for anything like this before. Richard leaned back in his chair, his expression unmoved. Serena, we all make sacrifices for the job. If you can't handle the responsibilities here, maybe you need to reconsider your priorities. We can't afford disruptions because of personal problems. Serena departed from Richard's office feeling defeated, her heart burdened and tears threatening to escape. As she made her way back to her desk, the gravity of the situation weighed heavily upon her. The stark contrast between the company's professed values and the manager's absence of empathy was painfully evident. The incident, unbeknownst to Richard, resonated throughout the office. Whispers of discontent and disapproval spread among the employees who observed the heartlessness of their manager at a moment when empathy was needed the most. The episode served as a stark reminder of the toxic leadership that had infiltrated the once thriving and compassionate workplace of Golden Peaks. Serena, a devoted and diligent employee at Golden Peaks, was a shining example of commitment and hard work. Her days were filled with tireless efforts to contribute to the success of the company, earning her the respect and admiration of her colleagues. Outside the office, Serena was the heart of a loving family. Married to James, a supportive partner who often travelled for work, she was the proud mother of a young son named Ethan. The family's strength lay in Serena's ability to balance the demands of her career with the responsibilities of motherhood. Despite facing personal challenges, Serena was determined to maintain a clear boundary between her work life and personal life. Her commitment to upholding a high standard of work ethic became evident in various instances, showcasing her resilience and professionalism. During important meetings, Serena presented a composed front. She did not allow the stress of her situation to impact her professional demeanour. Colleagues were impressed by her ability to articulate ideas, contribute meaningfully to discussions and project a sense of control, even when faced with personal challenges. Rather than succumbing to the pressure, Serena proactively sought solutions to streamline her workload. She identified tasks that could be delegated and communicated effectively with her team. Her leadership in organising resources showcased her commitment to ensuring that the team's objectives were met, even in her absence. Her desk was a testament to the meticulous work ethic, organised even in the face of personal crisis, 
She navigated meetings, deadlines and projects with a composed exterior, concealing the turmoil within. That fateful week, however, presented Serena with an unforeseen challenge. Ethan fell gravely ill, his fever persistent and causing deep concern. The timing couldn't have been worse as James was away on a work assignment, leaving Serena to manage both her professional obligations and the pressing needs for her ailing son. After being denied a leave, she caught a brief break in the office kitchen and a colleague, Maria, noticed the weariness in Serena's eyes. Concerned and empathetic, Maria offered a comforting word. Serena, we've all noticed how tirelessly you've been working. Especially with Ethan being unwell. If there's anything we can do to help, please let us know. Serena, grateful for the unexpected support, managed a weary but appreciative smile. Thank you, Maria. It's been a challenging time, but I'm doing my best to manage. Your understanding means a lot. Despite the personal turmoil, Serena's contributions to the company did not go unnoticed. Her ability to maintain professionalism and dedication during such a trying period spoke volumes about her character. Serena's resilience and commitment endeared her to her colleagues, showcasing the strength that could be found in the face of adversity. Later that day, she received a call that would jolt her from her realm of spreadsheets and deadlines into the stark reality of her son's worsening condition. The caller was Ruth, Serena's neighbour, who had been entrusted with checking on Ethan while Serena was at work. Serena, it's Ruth. I'm at your place checking on Ethan and his fever has spiked. I, I think you need to come home right away. Ruth's voice was laced from concern. The words hit Serena like a sudden storm, shaking her to the core. Without a moment's hesitation, she abandoned her desk, leaving behind unfinished tasks and a half-typed email. The urgency of the situation eclipsed everything else, and Serena's thoughts shifted from quarterly reports to the well-being of her son. I'll be there in ten minutes, Serena replied, her voice tense with worry. She rushed to inform her immediate colleagues about the emergency, leaving a trail of concern in her wake. As Serena navigated the streets, her mind raced with a torrent of fears and prayers. The commute home felt like an eternity, each passing second intensifying the worry that gripped her heart. Thoughts of Ethan, lying ill and alone, fueled Serena's urgency, urging her to reach him as swiftly as possible. Upon arriving home, Serena found Ruth, her neighbour, trying to comfort Ethan. The sight of her son, pale and weak, sent a surge of anguish through Serena. Without uttering a word, she scooped Ethan into her arms and made her way to the door, gratitude in her eyes as she thanked her neighbour for her assistance. Colleagues who witnessed Serena's abrupt departure shared concerned glances, recognising the gravity of the situation. Serena's call had not only interrupted the flow of work, but had also exposed the vulnerability behind Serena's composed exterior. In the days that followed, Serena focused on caring for Ethan, ensuring that he received the medical attention he needed. Her dedication to her son's recovery took precedence over any professional concerns, highlighting the unwavering love and commitment that defined Serena, not just as an employee, but as a devoted mother. The incident served as a poignant reminder to her colleagues that, beyond the boardrooms and deadlines, lay lives marked by genuine human experiences and challenges. As Serena returned to work after a harrowing period spent caring for her son, she found herself summoned to Richard's office. The air in the office seemed heavy with tension as she knocked on the door, entering with a mix of trepidation and exhaustion. Serena! Richard's voice was sharp and accusatory. I understand you had a family emergency, but you left without my permission. You abandoned your work and your responsibilities here. Serena, though emotionally drained from the recent ordeal with her son, maintained her composure. Mr. Richard, I apologise for any inconvenience cause. It was an urgent situation with my son's health, and I had to prioritise his well-being. Richard's stern expression did not waver. Serena, we have policies in place for a reason. Leaving without approval is unacceptable. We can't have employees neglecting their duties because of personal issues. 
as Serena attempted to explain the urgency of the situation and how she had tried to inform her colleagues, Richard remained unyielding. I understand the challenges, but we all have responsibilities. This company cannot tolerate such disruptions. A heavy silence hung in the room as Richard seemed to deliberate his next words. Finally, he delivered the blow that Serena had feared. Oh, I'm sorry, Serena, but your actions have consequences. I'm afraid I have to let you go. We need employees who can prioritise their work commitments over personal matters. Serena's heart sank as the weight of the situation became clear. The termination, though expected, felt like a harsh and cold judgement after the emotional turmoil she had endured. She gathered her belongings in silence, the air in the room thick with the injustice of the decision. Richard, seemingly unmoved, concluded the meeting with a detached tone. I wish you the best, Serena, but Golden Peaks requires employees who can adhere to company policies and prioritise their professional duties. As Serena left Richard's office, a mix of emotions swelled within her. Disappointment, frustration and a profound sense of injustice. Her departure from Golden Peaks marked the end of her professional journey with a company that, at that moment, seemed to prioritise policies over compassion. The severe treatment meted out by Richard to Serena sent shockwave through the entire office, creating a ripple effect of discontent and disapproval. Unbeknownst to Richard, the incident became a talking point among the employees, sparking whispers of frustration and disbelief. What had unfolded showcased the stark contrast between the human need for empathy during personal crises and the perceived heartlessness of their manager. The discontent that spread like wildfire was not merely about Serena's abrupt termination, but rather a reflection of the toxic leadership that seemed to have infiltrated what was once a thriving and compassionate workplace at Golden Peaks. The incident underscored the growing concern among the employees about the company's shift away from a culture that valued its workforce as individuals facing real-life challenges. The whispers echoed in the hallways and lingered by the water cooler, creating an undercurrent of scepticism toward the managerial decisions being made. Employees, once united by a sense of camaraderie and shared goals, now found themselves questioning the compassion and understanding that seemed lacking in the upper echelons of the company. This period served as a stark reminder to the Golden Peaks workforce that the leadership's focus on policies and procedures had overshadowed the need for empathy and humanity. The once thriving workplace now grappled with a palpable sense of disillusionment, as employees wondered if their loyalty and hard work could be dismissed so callously in times of personal crises. The aftermath of Serena's termination became a turning point in the office dynamics, prompting a silent rebellion against the toxic leadership that had taken root. The incident became a cautionary tale, a haunting reminder that the values of compassion and understanding were indispensable in maintaining the delicate balance between professional expectations and the unavoidable complexities of personal life. As Serena walked out of Richard's office, the weight of frustration, disappointment and injustice bore down on her shoulders. The realisation that she had been fired not for any professional shortcomings, but for prioritising her son's health, left her feeling a profound sense of betrayal. Unbeknownst to Richard, Serena's frustration reached a breaking point as she made her way to the entrance of the office building. Finding a secluded spot, Serena sank to the floor, overcome with emotion. Tears streamed down her face as the floodgate of pent-up feelings burst open. The once thriving professional had been reduced to a vulnerable, defeated figure, laying bare her pain and sorrow on the cold tiles of the entrance. Why does it have to be this way? Serena whispered to herself, the words escaping between sobs. I dedicated so much to this company, and in my moment of need... They cast me aside like I'm disposable. The echoes of her voice mingled with the ambient sounds of the office, a heartbreaking melody of frustration and despair. Serena, who had always prided herself on her strength and resilience, felt a profound sense of vulnerability that she hadn't expected. I just wanted to take care of my son. Is that too much to ask? 
Serena questioned the unforgiving circumstances that had led her to this moment. The weight of the unjust decision pressed heavily on her chest, leaving her gasping for breath between sobs. A colleague passing by noticed Serena, the usually composed and determined employee, now lying vulnerable at the entrance. Serena, are you okay? They asked with genuine concern. Serena looked up, her tears streaked face reflecting the pain within. No, I'm not okay. I gave everything up to this company and they tossed me aside when I needed them the most. The sympathetic colleague extended a hand, offering comfort in the face of injustice. As Serena tried to collect herself, she couldn't shake the bitter taste of betrayal that lingered in the air. The entrance of the office building, once a gateway to professional achievement, had become an unexpected stage for Serena's emotional unravelling. A poignant symbol of the toll exacted by a toxic work environment. Later that day, Richard received an email notifying him of Mr Howard's impending visit to the office. Richard's initial reaction was a mix of anticipation and anxiety. The presence of the company's owner carried a weight that demanded meticulous preparations. However, the timing couldn't have been worse for Richard, considering the recent controversial decision to terminate Serena. Richard's mind raced as he read through the details of the email. The realisation that Mr Howard's visit coincided with a period of internal turmoil within the team made the upcoming encounter even more daunting. He couldn't afford any hint of discord or negativity, especially with the owner bringing his daughter, Jo, along. Determined to present a facade of harmony and productivity, Richard set about making preparations. He meticulously reviewed the schedule, ensuring that all presentations and reports were polished and ready for scrutiny. The office atmosphere needed to exude professionalism and efficiency, masking the recent upheaval caused by Serena's dismissal. In an attempt to preempt any awkward questions or discussions about Serena's departure, Richard sent out a memo to all employees. He made it explicitly clear that any mention of the recent termination was strictly off limits during Mr. Howard and Joe's visit. The email emphasised the importance of projecting a united and positive front for the company's leadership. Richard convened a brief meeting with department heads, reiterating the importance of adhering to the directive. We need to present a cohesive and united front during Mr Howard's visit. No discussion about recent personal matters. He declared sternly, his authoritarian tone underscoring the severity of the warning. As the time of Mr Howard's visit approached, Richard went above and beyond to ensure that the office was immaculate. He inspected meeting rooms, double-checked the presentation equipment and reminded staff to be on their best behaviour. The aim was to create an atmosphere that would overshadow any recent negative events and emphasise the company's commitment to success. When Mr Howard and Joe finally arrived, Richard greeted them with a meticulously rehearsed smile. He guided them through the office showcasing the purported harmony and efficiency of the workplace. As they interacted with employees, Richard kept a watchful eye, ensuring that the scripted narrative of positivity prevailed. Although the visit appeared successful on the surface, Richard couldn't shake the palpable tension that lingered within him. The meticulously crafted facade of unity and productivity managed to conceal the recent controversies, casting a temporary veil over the shadows that had enveloped Golden Peaks. The challenge persisted, requiring Richard to delicately navigate the balance between presenting a polished image and confronting the unresolved issues simmering beneath the surface. Richard's meticulous preparations proved to be a triumph, skillfully navigating the delicate balance of upholding a polished image and avoiding any mention of recent controversies. Throughout the day, Richard's thorough preparations paid off, unexpectedly resulting in a coveted invitation to join Mr Howard and his daughter Jo for lunch. Upon receiving the invitation, Richard felt a wave of relief wash over him. The prospect of an intimate lunch with the company's owner and his influential daughter presented an opportunity to solidify his standing within the organisation. Eager to capitalise on this unexpected turn of events, Richard joined Mr Howard and Joe with a composed demeanour that belied the underlying tension he had been grappling with.
the ambiance of the upscale restaurant reflected the success of the visit. And as the trio settled into their seats, a veneer of conviviality masked the complexities beneath. Mr. Howard, appreciative of Richard's efforts, wasted no time in expressing his gratitude. Richard, Mr. Howard began, a warm smile on his face. I must say, the office looks exceptional today. Your dedication to maintaining a positive work environment hasn't gone unnoticed. Richard, seizing the moment, responded with a gracious nod. Thank you, Mr. Howard. We strive for excellence at Golden Peaks, and your positive feedback is truly motivating for the entire team. As the lunch progressed, Jo chimed in with her observations, commending Richard on the professionalism evident during the visit. It's clear you have a handle on things here, Richard. The office exudes a sense of cohesion and productivity, she remarked, and Richard couldn't help but feel a surge of validation. Mr. Howard, sensing the unspoken challenges beneath the surface, shifted the conversation toward future endeavours. Richard, we're on the brink of exciting opportunities, and I believe Golden Peaks has the potential for even greater success. Your role in steering the ship during this visit has not gone unnoticed. The words were a balm to Richard's anxieties. Mr. Howard's praise not only affirmed his position within the company, but also hinted at a future of continued trust and responsibility. As the lunch concluded, Richard left the restaurant with a renewed sense of confidence. The unexpected turn of events had not only salvaged the aftermath of Serena's termination, but had also positioned Richard as a capable leader in the eyes of the company's key decision makers. The delicate balance he had navigated proved to be a testament to his ability to manage crises and emerge unscathed, at least for the time being. Back at the office, the news of Richard's decision to terminate Serena had not settled in well yet, creating a palpable tension in the air. Whispers and hushed conversations echoed through the corridors as employees gathered in small groups, exchanging bewildered glances and murmuring about the unexpected turn of events. Serena, a respected and well-liked member of the team, had left an indelible mark on her colleagues. The shock of her termination rippled through the office, leaving many bewildered and concerned about the future dynamics of the team. A group of employees, led by some of Serena's closest colleagues, decided to take a stand. In a spontaneous act of solidarity, they congregated in the break room, where discussions quickly evolved into impromptu strategy sessions. Fueled by a sense of injustice, they crafted a petition, detailing their grievances and demanding an explanation for Serena's abrupt departure. The petition quickly gained traction as more employees joined the cause. Messages of support flooded in, and the office atmosphere became charged with a collective determination to seek justice for Serena. The group, now growing in numbers, scheduled a meeting with Richard to present their concerns and plead for a reconsideration of Serena's termination. Emily, one of Serena's closest colleagues, stood up during the impromptu gathering in the break room. Her voice trembled with a mix of disbelief and determination as she addressed the group. I can't believe this is happening. Serena was the backbone of our team and now she's gone? We can't just stand by and let this happen without a fight. Who's with me? The room filled with nods and murmurs of agreement as employees rallied around Emily's call to action. Together, they drafted a petition, pouring their emotions into every word. David, a passionate advocate for workplace fairness, spoke up. We need to make it clear that we won't accept this decision without a proper explanation. Richard can't just dismiss Serena like this. Let's gather signatures and show him the strength of our solidarity. As the petition gained momentum, employees shared stories of Serena's impact on both a professional and personal level. The break room became a hub of activism, echoing with impassioned conversations about loyalty, justice and the future of the team. The group scheduled a meeting with Richard, determined to make their voices heard. During the confrontation, Susan, a veteran team member, confronted Richard with a mix of disappointment and frustration. As the news reached Richard's ears, he found himself facing a different kind of challenge. The confident aura he had gained after the lunch meeting dissipated as he realised the extent of the discontent among his team. 
The once subdued murmurs had transformed into a chorus of dissent, echoing through the office walls. In response, Richard decided to hold an impromptu meeting to address the concerns directly. As he faced the assembled employees, the tension in the room was palpable. The group advocating for Serena presented their case passionately, highlighting her contributions and questioning the rationale behind her termination. Richard, we trusted you to lead us, but firing Serena without any clear reason is a betrayal of that trust. We deserve an explanation and she deserves a fair chance to defend herself. You can't just make decisions that affect us all without considering the consequences. Richard, feeling the weight of the discontent, attempted to justify his decision. However, Lisa, a seasoned project manager, interjected with a pointed question. Richard, we understand tough decisions need to be made, but how can we trust your judgement when you keep us in the dark? Serena's termination has left a void and we need more than vague assurances. Transparency is key to maintaining a healthy work environment. Richard, now on the defensive, explained the difficult decision he had to make for the sake of the company's future. Despite the impassioned pleas and concerns voiced by the employees, Richard, employing a shrewd and calculated demeanour, took control of the situation. As the accusations mounted, he addressed the assembled team with an air of authority. Look, I understand emotions are running high and I appreciate your dedication to Serena, but decisions like these aren't taken lightly. There are factors at play that I can't disclose for confidentiality reasons. Trust me, it's for the benefit of the company and its future. His words, delivered with a stern tone, left the room in a momentary silence. Emily, determined to challenge Richard's stance, spoke up with a quiver in her voice. Richard, dismissing Serena just because she took a leave to care for her son isn't a valid justification. We need to understand the rationale behind Serena's termination. We've collaborated with her closely and it's deeply unsettling to witness her abrupt dismissal. Without a clear explanation. This uncertainty is taking a toll on the team's morale. Richard fixed a steely gaze on Emily, asserting his authority. I appreciate your concern, Emily, but sometimes tough decisions have to be made. This is not up for debate. I assure you that I've considered the implications thoroughly. It's time to move forward. David, known for his outspoken nature, attempted to push back. Richard, we're a team and transparency is crucial for maintaining trust. We need to understand the rationale behind such a significant decision. In response, Richard's tone became sharper and a subtle threat lingered in his words. I understand your desire for transparency. But some matters are better left undiscussed. You're all professionals and I expect you to focus on your work. Questioning the decisions made at the top won't do any of us any good. Let's not forget the bigger picture here. The weight of Richard's authority hung in the air, leaving the employees momentarily speechless. The implicit threat and the remainder of their professional obligations stifled further dissent. As the meeting concluded, a palpable sense of powerlessness settled over the team and they dispersed with a mixture of frustration and resignation, realising that challenging Richard's decision might come at a cost to their positions within the company. He emphasised the need for confidentiality surrounding personal matters but promised a more transparent communication approach in the future. The exchange left the office in a state of uncertainty, with employees torn between loyalty to Serena and a desire to trust their leader's judgement. Little did Richard know that the aftermath of Serena's termination was far from over. The seeds of dissent had been sown and the office dynamics were poised for a turbulent chapter, one that would test Richard's leadership skills and the resilience of the team he had worked so hard to build. The next day, Mr. Howard and his daughter found themselves with business in the vicinity of the office. They decided it was an opportune moment to drop off some items at the office. As they were leaving the familiar surroundings, Joe, Mr. Howard's daughter, had an unexpected encounter. As Joe rounded a corner, she nearly collided with someone hastily exiting a room. 
Oh, sorry, she exclaimed, steadying herself and glancing up to see who it was. Serena, preoccupied with the task of gathering her belongings, looked up in surprise. Recognition flickered in her eyes as she took in Joe's familiar face. Joe, is that you? She asked, a mixture of disbelief and a warmth colouring her tone. Joe's surprise turned into a wide grin as she realised who stood before her. Serena, I can't believe it's you. What are you doing here? She exclaimed, stepping closer to her old classmate. Serena shrugged, a bittersweet smile playing on her lips. Just tying up loose ends, I guess. It's been quite a whirlwind. As Joe chatted with Serena, she couldn't shake off the feeling of surprise. She had no idea that Serena was working at her father's company. After exchanging pleasantries with Mr. Howard, Joe turned to Serena with a curious expression. Serena, I had no idea you were working here. How long have you been with the company? Serena let out a rueful chuckle, her gaze briefly flickering towards the now familiar office surroundings. Five years, and it has been an interesting experience to say the least. Joe nodded, sensing the underlying tension in Serena's words. So what brings you here today? Are you leaving the company? Serena hesitated for a moment, her expression clouding with a mix of emotions. Yeah, something like that. I'm collecting my things. I was let go. Joe's eyes widened in surprise and concern. Oh no! I'm so sorry to hear that. What happened? If you don't mind me asking. Serena sighed, her shoulders slumping slightly. It's complicated. Let's just say there were some disagreements and it didn't end well. As Jo prepared to leave the office with her father, she couldn't shake off the sight of Serena's weary eyes and the sadness etched on her face. Despite Serena's attempts to brush off the topic, Jo's concern only deepened. As they made their way towards the exit, Jo paused, turning back to Serena with a determined expression. Serena, I know you don't want to talk about it, but I can't just ignore the way you look right now. Something happened and I want to understand. Please tell me what caused your termination. Serena hesitated, her gaze shifting uncomfortably. She hadn't planned on discussing the details with anyone, but the concern in Joe's eyes was impossible to ignore. With a heavy sigh, she relented, deciding to confide in her old classmate. It's... it's a long story. Serena began, her voice tinged with resignation. But essentially, I... I asked Richard for a leave to take care of my son. He's been ill, and I needed to be there for him, but Richard denied my request, citing company policy and deadlines. Joe's eyes widened in disbelief, a mixture of anger and sympathy bubbling within her. That's awful, Serena! How could he deny you something so important? Serena shrugged helplessly, her voice laced with frustration. I don't know. I tried to explain the situation, but he wouldn't budge. And then, when my son's condition worsened unexpectedly, I had to rush home without informing him. I knew I would face consequences, but I had no choice. Tears welled up in Serena's eyes as she recounted the painful ordeal, the weight of her son's illness, and the subsequent termination bearing down on her. Joe reached out, placing a comforting hand on Serena's shoulder. I'm so sorry, Serena. No one should have to go through that. It's not right. Joe said softly, her heart aching for her old friend. Serena nodded, grateful for Joe's empathy. Thank you, Joe. It means a lot to me. I just, I just hope I can figure things out from here. As they parted ways, Joe couldn't shake off the heaviness in her heart. The injustice of Serena's situation lingered in her mind, a stark reminder of the importance of compassion and understanding in the workplace. Joe and Serena's friendship blossomed during their middle school years, a time marked by shared laughter, inside jokes and countless memories. They were inseparable, often found huddled together in the school library, poring over textbooks or doodling in notebooks during boring classes. Their friendship was a source of comfort and joy, a bond that transcended the typical cliques and social circles of adolescence. Whether it was cheering each other on during school events or commiserating over failed tests, Joe and Serena were always there for each other. 
Their friendship thrived on mutual trust, understanding, and a shared sense of humour that could brighten even the gloomiest of days. However, as high school approached, life began to pull them in different directions. New friendships formed, interests diverged, and the demands of academics and extracurricular activities consumed their time and attention. Despite their best intentions, Joe and Serena found themselves drifting apart, their once inseparable bond gradually fading into distant memories. Years passed, and Joe and Serena lost touch, each absorbed in their own lives and pursuits. It wasn't until their unexpected encounter at the office that the spark of their friendship reignited, bridging the gap of years spent apart. As they started reminiscing about their middle school days, they caught up on the years they had missed. Joe and Serena found themselves reconnecting on a deeper level, rekindling the warmth and camaraderie that had defined their friendship so many years ago. Despite the passage of time and the changes that had shaped their lives, Joe and Serena discovered that some friendships were timeless, their bond resilient enough to withstand the test of distance and time. As they promised to keep in touch and make an effort to reconnect, Joe and Serena knew that their friendship was a treasure worth cherishing, a reminder of the enduring power of true friendship. As Joe and Serena engaged in their heartfelt conversation, Mr. Howard stood nearby, quietly observing the interaction between the two old friends. His keen eyes studied their body language, the subtle nuances of their expressions and the underlying emotions that coloured their words. As they spoke, Mr. Howard couldn't help but feel a sense of admiration for Joe's empathy and concern for her friend. He noted the way Serena opened up to Joe sharing his struggles and vulnerabilities with an honesty that spoke volumes about the depth of their connection. Moved by their exchange, Mr. Howard made a decision. Later that day, he decided to pay a surprise visit to Richard's department, curious to see the dynamics of the team first hand. As he entered the department, Mr. Howard discreetly observed the interactions between Richard and his employees. To his surprise, Mr. Howard witnessed a side of Richard that he hadn't seen before. Instead of the composed and confident demeanour he often projected in meetings, Richard appeared agitated and impatient. Mr. Howard watched in dismay as Richard raised his voice at an employee, his tone sharp and dismissive. Richard, usually composed and professional, was now berating one of his employees in a manner that bordered on cruelty. You call this a report? It's full of errors and sloppy work. Do you even know what you're doing here? Richard's voice echoed harshly through the office, his eyes ablaze with anger. The employee, visibly shaken by Richard's outburst, stuttered nervously in response. I, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll fix it right away. Please, just give me another chance. Richard's lip curled into a disdainful sneer. Another chance? You've had enough chances already! If you can't get it right this time, don't bother coming back! As the employee hurriedly scurried away, Mr. Howard exchanged a concerned glance with a nearby colleague. It was clear the Richard's leadership style left much to be desired, and the fear and tension in the air were palpable. Moments later, another employee approached Richard tentatively, holding out a stack of papers for his review. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. I've completed the task you assigned me. Would you like to take a look? Richard snatched the papers from the employee's hands, his expression darkening as he skimmed through them. This is unacceptable. I asked for accuracy and attention to detail, and this is what you gave me. Do you even care about your job? The employee's shoulders slumped in defeat, her voice barely above a whisper. I did my best, sir. I'll redo them right away. Richard scoffed derisively. Your best isn't good enough. If you can't meet my standards, maybe you should start looking for another job. As Richard continued to boss around the employees, Mr. Howard's disappointment grew. This wasn't the leadership style he had expected from Richard, and it painted a troubling picture of the workplace culture he had worked so hard to cultivate. Concerned by what he had witnessed, Mr. Howard made a mental note to address the situation with Richard. It was clear that there were underlying issues within the department that needed to be addressed, and, as the head of the company, 
it was his responsibility to ensure a positive and respectful work environment for all employees. With a determined resolve, Mr Howard left the department, his mind already spinning with plans to address the situation and uphold the values of integrity and respect that were at the core of his company's ethos. Joe, on the other hand, wanted to seek justice for her friend Serena, so she decided to do some speculation. Joe entered Richard's department. She could sense the tension in the air. Employees darted nervous glances at each other, their expressions guarded and cautious. Undeterred, Joe approached a group of employees gathered near the water cooler, hoping to glean some insight into the situation. Hi, I'm Joe. She began with a friendly smile. I'm just here to check in and see how things are going. How's everyone holding up? The employees exchanged hesitant glances before one of them. A young woman with a weary expression spoke up tentatively. We're managing, I guess. It's been a bit tense lately, but we're trying to stay focused on our work. Joe nodded sympathetically, sensing the underlying unease in the woman's voice. I understand. If there's anything you need or if you want to talk about anything, I'm here to listen. The employees nodded appreciatively, but the atmosphere remained tense as they exchanged hesitant glances. It was clear that they were hesitant to speak openly, their fear of reprisal palpable. However, Joe was determined to break through the barrier of silence. With a gentle but persistent approach, she encouraged the employees to share their thoughts and concerns, assuring them that their voices mattered. Finally, after a few moments of hesitant silence, one of the employees, a middle-aged man with a thorough brow, spoke up with a shaky voice. I'm sorry, Joe, but things haven't been easy since Richard took over. <laughs> He's not the kind of leader we hoped for. His words seemed to break the dam of silence and suddenly the floodgates opened. Employees began to speak up one by one, sharing their frustrations and grievances about Richard's management style. He's constantly belittling us and micromanaging every detail. He plays favourites and doesn't give credit where it's due. He's created a toxic environment where fear rules over respect. As the employees pulled out their frustrations, Cho listened intently, her heart heavy with empathy for their plight. It was clear that Richard's leadership had taken a toll on morale and productivity and something needed to change. Determined to seek justice for her friend Serena and her colleagues, Jo made a mental note to address the situation with Mr Howard. It was time to confront Richard's behaviour and restore integrity and respect to the workplace. As Richard spotted Jo in his department, a calculating smile spread across his face. With practiced charm, he quickly made his way over to her, his demeanour oozing with false warmth. Jo, what a pleasant surprise to see you here, Richard exclaimed, extending his hand in greeting. It's been too long since we last caught up. How have you been? Jo eyed Richard warily, sensing the shift in his behaviour. I've been well, thank you, she replied politely, though her scepticism was evident. Richard continued to lay on the charm, his tone overly friendly as he gestured towards his employees. And, and how about you? How's everything going with you? I, I hope you've been finding success in your endeavours. Joe nodded, albeit with a hint of suspicion. Things are going well, thank you, but I I'm more interested in here about how things are going on here. Your team seems to be working hard. Richard chuckled, his smile never faltering. Oh, they're a great bunch, aren't they? <laughs> the backbone of this company. I, I couldn't ask for a better team. Joe couldn't help but raise an eyebrow at Richard's sudden display of camaraderie. It was a stark contrast to his usual demeanour, and she couldn't shake off the feeling that something was amiss. As Richard continued to sing the praises of his employees, Joe listened politely, though her scepticism only grew stronger. It was clear that Richard was trying to manipulate the situation, but Jo wasn't about to let him off the hook that easily. She made a mental note to remain vigilant and to address the underlying issues with Mr Howard at the earliest opportunity. As Jo finished relaying her concerns about Richard's behaviour to her father, Mr Howard, a grave expression settled over his features. He had suspected that there were issues within Richard's department, but hearing Joe's first-hand account confirmed his fears. 
I appreciate you bringing this to my attention, Joe, Mr. Howard said, his voice tinged with concern. I've had my suspicions about Richard's leadership style for some time now, but your insights have shed new light on the situation. It's clear that action needs to be taken. Joe nodded in agreement, her determination unwavering. I couldn't agree more, Dad. The way Richard treats his employees is unacceptable and it's creating a toxic work environment. Something needs to change. Mr. Howard placed a reassuring hand on Joe's shoulder, offering her a supportive smile. Don't worry, Joe. I'll handle this. It's my responsibility to ensure a positive and respectful workplace for all employees. I'll schedule a meeting with Richard to address the issues and find a resolution. Joe's eyes sparkled with gratitude as she looked up at her father. Thank you, Dad. I, I know you'll do what's right. We, we can't let Richard's behaviour continue unchecked. With a renewed sense of purpose, Mr. Howard made his way to his office, his mind already buzzing with plans to address the situation. He was determined to confront Richard and uphold the values of integrity and respect that were at the core of his company's ethos. Meanwhile, Jo couldn't help but feel a sense of pride in her father's leadership. She knew that with Mr. Howard at the helm, positive change was on the horizon, and she was grateful to have him as a role model and a mentor. Together, they would work to ensure a brighter future for all employees, free from the toxicity of Richard's management. With a mischievous glint in his eye, Mr. Howard formulated his plan to address the issues with Richard's management style. He knew that a direct approach wouldn't yield the desired results, so he decided to employ a more subtle tactic. As he scheduled a meeting with Richard, Mr. Howard couldn't help but smile to himself, envisioning the surprise that awaited his colleague. He was determined to catch Richard off guard and challenge him to reflect on his actions. When the day of the meeting arrived, Mr. Howard greeted Richard with a warm smile, masking his attentions behind a facade of geniality. Richard, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to have a chat about the department and how things are going. Richard, caught off guard by Mr. Howard's sudden request for a meeting, nodded cautiously. Of course, Mr. Howard. Well, what would you like to discuss? Mr. Howard leaned back in his chair, his expression unreadable as he addressed Richard. Well, Richard, I've been hearing some concerns about the workplace environment in your department. I wanted to allow you to address these issues and share your perspective. Richard's eyes widened in surprise, his composure faltering for a moment before he regained his composure. Concerns? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Mr. Howard. Everything in my department is running smoothly. Mr. Howard raised an eyebrow, his tone laced with playful scepticism. Is that so, Richard? Because from what I've heard, there seems to be some, uh, rumblings among the employees. Complaints about micromanagement, lack of respect, you know, the usual. Richard's facade of confidence wavered and a flicker of unease crossed his features. Uh, I assure you, Mr. Howard, any issues in the department are being addressed promptly. I have the utmost respect for my team and their contributions. Mr. Howard leaned forward, his gaze piercing as he locked eyes with Richard. I see. Well, Richard, I trust that you'll take these concerns seriously and work to create a positive and respectful work environment for all employees. After all, that's what we strive for here at our company. With that, Mr. Howard ended the meeting, leaving Richard to ponder the implications of their conversation. As he walked away, a satisfied smile played on Mr. Howard's lips. He had planted the seed of doubt in Richard's mind, and he was confident that positive change would soon follow. As Richard left the meeting with Mr. Howard, a sense of unease gnawed at him. He couldn't shake off the feeling that his actions had finally caught up with him, and he dreaded the consequences that awaited him. Determined to salvage his reputation, Richard doubled down on his efforts to control his department. He cracked down harder on his employees, instilling a culture of fear and intimidation in a desperate attempt to maintain his grip on power. But his efforts only seemed to exacerbate the situation. Morale plummeted, productivity stagnated, and whispers of discontent grew louder with each passing day. Richard's leadership style had become increasingly tyrannical and his employees grew more resentful with each reasonable demand. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Howard continued to monitor the situation closely, biding his time as he waited for the opportune moment to intervene. He knew that Richard's downfall was inevitable, but he was determined to handle the situation with tact and diplomacy. Then, one fateful day, as tensions reached a boiling point in Richard's department, a dramatic twist unfolded. An anonymous whistleblower came forward with damning evidence of Richard's unethical behaviour, including instances of harassment and discrimination. The revelation sent shockwaves through the company and Mr Howard wasted no time in launching a thorough investigation. With the evidence stacked against him, Richard's fate was sealed. He was promptly relieved of his duties, his once prominent position reduced to a mere footnote in the company's history. As the dust settled and the company began to rebuild, Mr. Howard emerged as a beacon of integrity and leadership. His swift action in addressing the situation earned him the respect and admiration of his employees and the company emerged stronger and more united than ever before. And amidst the chaos and upheaval, Joe and Serena stood side by side, their friendship stronger than ever as they navigated the challenges together. As they looked towards the future with hope and optimism, they knew that they had weathered the storm and emerged victorious, ready to face whatever obstacles lay ahead. With a heavy heart and a sense of duty, Mr. Howard called Richard into his office to address the damning evidence against him. Richard entered the room, his expression a mix of defiance and apprehension. Richard, I'm sure you're aware of the allegations that have been brought to my attention. Mr. Howard began, his tone firm but measured. After a thorough investigation, it has become clear that there is substantial evidence for misconduct on your part. Richard's face paled slightly, but he quickly composed himself, attempting to feign ignorance. I, uh, I, I'm not sure what you're referring to, Mr. Howard. I assure you, I've always acted in the best interests of the company. Mr. Howard sighed, his disappointment evident as he laid out the evidence before Richard. Oh, Richard, the evidence speaks for itself. Your behaviour has been unacceptable, and it's clear that you've violated company policies and standards of conduct. Richard's facade crumbled, his shoulders slumping in defeat as he realised the gravity of the situation. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Howard. I didn't mean for things to spiral out of control. Please give me another chance. Mr. Howard shook his head sadly, his decision already made. I'm afraid it's too late for apologies, Richard. Your actions have had serious consequences, not only for yourself, but for the entire company. I have had no choice but to relieve you of your duties, effective immediately. Richard's face drained of colour as the weight of Mr. Howard's words sunk in. He had underestimated the severity of the situation, and now he was paying the price for his hubris. As Richard left the office, his once prominent position reduced to a mere footnote in the company's history, Mr. Howard couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness for what could have been. But he knew that he had made the right decision, putting the integrity and well-being of the company above all else. Richard could feel the stares of his former colleagues burning into him as he made his way through the office, the whispers of gossip and speculation following in his wake. I can't believe this is happening. Richard muttered to himself, his voice barely above a whisper. How did it all come to this? As he packed up his belongings, Richard couldn't shake off the sinking feeling of failure. He'd spent years climbing the corporate ladder, only to see it all come crashing down in an instant. The realisation of his downfall hit him like a ton of bricks, leaving him reeling with disbelief. I thought I was untouchable, Richard whispered bitterly, his voice laced with regret. I never imagined it would end like this. As he walked out of the office for the last time, Richard couldn't help but feel a sense of emptiness wash over him. The future that once seemed so promising now lay uncertain and bleak, his once prominent career reduced to a mere memory. <clears throat> I guess this is goodbye, Richard said softly, his voice tinged with resignation. I'll have to start over somewhere else, rebuild my life from scratch. With a heavy heart and a sense of defeat, Richard walked away from the company that had been his home for so long, leaving behind the wreckage of his shattered dreams. As he disappeared into the bustling streets, 
The consequences of his actions weighed heavily on his conscience. A stark reminder of the price he had paid for his mistakes. As Richard made his way out of the building, lost in his thoughts and grappling with the reality of his termination, he suddenly collided with someone entering the building. Looking up, he was met with the familiar face of Serena, the very person he had treated unfairly during his time as a manager. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard exclaimed, his voice tinged with genuine regret as he reached out to steady Serena. I, I didn't see you there. Are you all right? Serena, taken aback by Richard's unexpected apology, nodded cautiously, her expression guarded. Yes, I'm fine, thank you, she replied, her voice betraying a hint of scepticism. Richard hesitated for a moment, acutely aware of the weight of their past interactions hanging between them. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, Serena, for everything. I know I haven't always been the best manager and I regret the way I treated you. Serena studied Richard for a moment, searching his eyes for any signs of sincerity. Seeing the genuine remorse reflected in his gaze, she softened lightly, her expression thawing. Thank you, Richard, Serena said quietly, her voice laced with forgiveness. I appreciate your apology. It means a lot to me. Richard nodded, a sense of relief washing over him at Serena's gracious response. I'm glad to hear that. I truly wish you all the best in your future endeavours. With a final nod of acknowledgement, Richard continued on his way, his heart feeling lighter than it had in weeks. Though his journey ahead was uncertain, he knew that he had taken the first step towards redemption, and for that he was grateful. As he disappeared into the bustling streets, Richard couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope for the future, knowing that he had finally begun to make amends for his past mistakes. With Richard's absence, the company could finally begin to heal and move forward, guided by the values of integrity, respect and accountability that Mr. Howard had worked so hard to uphold. And as the dust settled, a new chapter in the company's history began, one marked by growth, resilience and a renewed sense of purpose. After Richard's departure, Mr. Howard wasted no time in addressing the void left by his absence. Recognising Serena's talents and dedication, he appointed her to a special project at the office, a decision that was met with overwhelming support from her colleagues. As Serena stepped back in the familiar surroundings of the office, she was greeted with cheers and applause from her co-workers, who had missed her presence dearly. They surrounded her, expressing their joy and excitement at her return. Serena, we're so happy to have you back, exclaimed one colleague, clapping her on the shoulder with a grin. We've missed your expertise and positive energy around here, another colleague chimed in, nodding enthusiastically. Yeah, things just haven't been the same without you. We're thrilled to see you back where you belong. Serena couldn't help but smile at the warm welcome she received, her heart swelling with gratitude for her supportive colleagues. Thank you, everyone, she said, her voice filled with emotion. It feels good to be back. I've missed all of you, too. As Serena settled back into her role at the office, her colleagues rallied around her, offering their assistance and encouragement every step of the way. Together, they worked tirelessly to make the special project a success, united by a shared sense of purpose and camaraderie. And as the project reached its conclusion, Serena couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. With the unwavering support of her colleagues and the trust of Mr. Howard, she had not only overcome the challenges she faced, but had also emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. As they celebrated the successful completion of the project, Serena's colleagues gathered around her once again, raising their glasses in a toast to her remarkable journey. To Serena, our fearless leader and inspiration, they cheered in unison. Here's to many more successes ahead. With smiles on their faces and hearts full of gratitude, Serena and her colleagues looked towards the future with optimism and determination, knowing that, together, they could overcome any obstacle that came their way. As the celebrations quieted down, Serena stood at the centre of the room, her heart overflowing with gratitude for her colleagues' unwavering support. With a smile on her face and tears of joy glistening in her eyes, she addressed the room, her voice filled with emotion. I just want to take a moment to thank every one of you for standing by me and believing in me, Serena began, 
her voice steady despite the emotions welling up inside her. Your support and encouragement have meant more to me than words can express. She then walked up to Joe, her eyes shining with appreciation. And to you, Joe, I owe a debt of gratitude that I can never repay. You saw the injustice I was facing and took a stand even when it wasn't easy. You completely turned my world around and I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jo smiled warmly, her own eyes misting with emotion. Serena, you don't owe me anything. I was just doing what any friend would do. Standing up for what's right and supporting someone I care about. I'm just glad I could help. Serena nodded, her heart full of love and appreciation for her friend. Well, you did more than just help, Joe. You saved my career, and for that I'll be forever grateful. With tears of joy streaming down her cheeks, Serena turned back to the rest of her colleagues, her voice ringing out with sincerity. Thank you all for believing in me and for allowing me to prove myself once again. Together we've shown that justice and integrity will always prevail. As applause filled the room and her colleagues gathered around her, Serena knew that she was surrounded by a team that truly cared. With their support and Joe's unwavering friendship, she felt ready to take on whatever challenges the future held, knowing that she would never have to face them alone.